Welcome back to Practically Pediatrics. I'm Dr. Marianne Iskander, and I am here today with Dr. Mori, a pediatric dentist, who is going to answer all our questions about our kids' teeth. All right, let's get to it. At what age should your child first have their first dentist appointment? That's a very good question, because you're like, wait, they don't have a ton of teeth when they're one. Do I really need to take them to a dentist? So right. as pediatric dentists, we definitely want to see them around first birthday. And that's not because they have a ton of teeth. We need to actually brush it or do something to it. It's really for us to sit with you parents and go over routines and positioning and what to use and what not to use and kind of have a review of diet. Um, so yeah, it's really an educational visit. And for the children, they get to learn what a dental setting is like. Mm -hmm. It's much harder for them to transition at age three, four. Yeah. There's lots of sensory stuff going on at a sure. dental office. So when we see them at first birthday, they grow into it. So each visit we can add a little bit and they get comfortable and hopefully we can keep them cavity free. Okay, Dr. Mori. I get some patients that have like a 9, 10, 11 month old and they still don't have teeth. So what is the average age of the first tooth and when should we worry when your child is too old to not have teeth? Kids get their teeth around age 7 months and usually every 4 months they get 4 teeth. But every child is mm. different. Some kids are a little bit ahead, some kids are a little bit slower in getting teeth. So we don't say get worried at any time. Usually we wait and we compare left and right together. So whenever the tooth is there on the left side, you want the mirror image to be there on the right side mm -hmm. within six months, but never compare two kids to each other. Every kid is different. Usually by one, one and a half, they should have a few teeth, but you know, just compare left and right to each other. We don't want to be around two with still no teeth. Okay. That's when we get a little bit inquisitive That's about weird. what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. What if they come out not in the usual order? Like, you know, usually you get the bottom and then the top. So I have some kids that get like the canines first. Like, what's up with that? So usually we get our front teeth first, bottom and then top, and then our laterals, and then we get first molars. And then after that, the canines, and then the second molars. Um, some kids are gonna have it in different order. Again, just look at the left and the right side of the mouth. We wanna be symmetrical, so. How do you properly clean an infant's tooth before they hit one years old? That's a very good question. So we Thank always you. <laughs> <laughs> we always tell parents you want to start getting into the mouth and getting your kid used to somebody being in there mm -hmm. to clean their gums, to clean their tongue. So whenever they're infants, even before they even have teeth, you want to get in there with a washcloth. Mm -hmm. So after feeding, especially at bedtime, you want to go in there and really clean their mouth and don't leave residual milk around. Um, there's tons of great tools out in the market. You can start by a little finger brush um, that goes on your finger. You can really get in there. And once they get teeth in, you want to actually use this, the softest bristle brush that you can find mm -hmm. and use that to clean their teeth. They are going to move. So um, the best positioning would be if they're on a changing table, and you wanna always attach it to something that's predictable. Mm -hmm. So the last diaper change before bedtime or getting into pajamas, something that, you so know. like a routine. Exactly. Got it. So they, they kind of learn that, hey, you know, this is my bedtime routine, and yes, I'm gonna have my mouth cleaned and my teeth brushed. Got it. Yeah. And then after a year of age, like a two-year-old, so a lot of times I'm asked, how am I supposed to brush my toddler's teeth when it's like wrestling a baby gator and it's like <laughs> flailing and screaming and clenching down? Please give us some advice because that is a big question I get asked almost daily. That's a very good Go question. A lot of parents have challenges with actually positioning the babies or the infants mm -hmm. or the toddlers. So um, we usually love sitting knee to knee 
Um, so pretty much two adults are sitting facing each other. The operator adult that has a toothbrush in their hand, the patient's head will be in their lap. And that way you can lift the lip up and really get a good view mm -hmm. and really have a good control because their head can't move. So you can get in there and brush them. Mm -hmm. If you're a solo operator, you can sit on the floor, you can sit on the bed anywhere and tuck their hands and knees underneath your legs and have their head again in your lap. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it kind of from the back. Exactly. Just like so playing they're tennis. Like this and you're like, like exactly. From the back. You know, just like, like plain dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about toothpaste. Is there a is there a time where you don't need toothpaste, or do you always need toothpaste from the first tooth? And then, what types of toothpaste do you recommend? Very good question. So we do recommend, and the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry recommends a fluoridated toothpaste. But again, it's really up to you guys how comfortable you are with it. Um, it's it's really a personal choice at the end of the day. What's really important is flavor. Kids are really picky about the flavor. Mm -hmm. So we wanna pick a flavor that they actually enjoy. Um, so we recommend once they get their teeth in, you need very, very little. So you need like a tip of a pencil first. And if you wanna break it up, the morning you don't have to use a fluoridated toothpaste and do the training one. And okay. then at night, do the fluoridated toothpaste. Okay, so training toothpaste do not have fluoride in it. They do not. Oh. So we do not love training toothpaste. Okay. But if you're picking and choosing, you know, how to balance it, mm -hmm. then the morning do the training toothpaste. Oh. All those training toothpaste do not have any fluoride. And then yeah. the other kids' toothpaste. I didn't know that. Ooh, there we go. We learn something new every day. I thought I knew everything. <laughs> I guess I don't. Oops. <laughs> well. A little, little bit of toothpaste. Before age three, a smear. Above age three, a pea size. Okay, good. So smear before age three, a pea size after age three. Yes. And not okay to swallow. No. Okay. The amount that goes on the toothbrush is very, very little. Next time, check your own toothbrushes and see how much you're putting on there. You need very, very little I toothpaste. I put a lot. Yeah? Like the good. commercial. Like, no! <laughs> <laughs> what is it the commercial? <laughs> They're trying to get you to buy more toothpaste, I probably. Know. They do go through the tube very quickly. Okay. You don't need much. Very little. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So the most common cause of decay in your child's mouth is milk in the bottle at, at night. night. <laughs> <laughs> they can have milk throughout the day. They can have it right before bedtime, but we cannot put food in their mouth when they're asleep. Mm, 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 mm. So I get a lot of my patients, I, you know, I take their sleep history and I say, is your child sleeping through the night? And usually by the time they're around a year, then this is generally speaking, around a year, the child is not really getting up anymore on their own, sleeping through the night, which is great. Another group of kids are still waking up, especially kids that are breastfeeding. And there are kids that really want that milk at night, which is not a good idea because it really affects your oral health. And it can, I think, deteriorate your oral health pretty rapidly if you That's keep doing it every single night, multiple times a night. So what do you recommend for those night feeds? So Besides the milk. Uh, we, we ideally want to not do any feedings at night when we're asleep. It's like us as adults falling asleep and we brush our teeth, we're in bed and we have a piece of cookie in our mouth mm -hmm. and it sits there mm. all night long, mm. right? We yeah. don't have saliva being produced, so it's not protecting our teeth at night as much as it is during the day. So if you can't do it cold turkey, let's start cutting it down. So if they're doing bottle feedings, I would do half milk, half water, mm -hmm. and then gradually just go to all water. Yeah. You gotta get that milk off their teeth. Even if you can get a washcloth in there, go for it. We just want that off the teeth, not sitting there all night long. Right. And guys, I, she taught me something new before we started filming. I thought the issue of milk was the lactose because lactose is a sugar. I thought the lactose was what was like wearing away the teeth, but that is not true. It's the bacteria that the dairy attracts that accumulates in your mouth and that causes the rot. Yeah, and make it more virulent. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was like 
I've been blaming lactose this whole time. I'm so sorry to the milk community and the lactose community. <laughs> I'm sorry. We still got milk. We still got milk. Drink your milk, but during the day and brush your teeth. That's okay. right. There you go. Is it the same with breastfeeding and like almond milk, soy milk, and stuff like that? Same thing. Same so thing? Milk is milk. Milk yeah. is milk. Okay. So just wipe it out, brush it out, do anything you can to get it off of the teeth as best as you can. Got it. When is a good time to wean your child off the bottle completely and when to do straw cups, sippy cups, and those really good 360 cups, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think around one to one and a half is a very good time for them to transition. Um, and if you do anything in the cups, the sippy cups, the straw cups, the 360 cups, we just want to do water, 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 water. Yeah. Nothing else in the cups besides water and plain white milk. Mm-hmm. What about juice? Juice? Yeesh. Juice can be a treat. It's a once in a while food. And if you are going to do juice, dilute it down with water. Dilute it down, definitely. She just doesn't want you to have juice. Yeah, it. pretty much. I say dilute it. <laughs> I say no juice. She says no juice. Kids <laughs> do drink. They have, well... Whatever, we're not gonna erase yeah. that. We're not gonna know what my kids do. Yeah. Don't worry about me. <laughs> worry about yourself. I know, worry about your own kids. Yeah, worry about your own kids. Don't, don't worry about what happens in the Exactly. <laughs> do it as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, the most important tooth emergency in a pediatric patient is an evolved tooth. So your child is like around eight, they are at baseball or soccer, mm -hmm. they get a hit in the face mm. and that tooth is fully out. Mm. That's a real big dental emergency. The adult tooth, not the baby tooth. If yeah. an adult permanent tooth falls out. With the baby tooth, call your dentist as soon as you can, make an appointment and go in ASAP. But with the adult tooth, put it in milk, only touch the crown of the tooth. What you see in the mouth is the crown and do not touch the root. Oh. Yeah, we don't want to harm the root. We want to make With sure. your dirty fingers. That's right. We mm -hmm. want to make sure you put it in milk and try to position that tooth back into the mouth if you're capable. If not, get to your dentist within 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And 30 if you minutes. can't get to your dentist within 30 minutes, it's just, it's a done deal. It's not a done deal. We still replant it. The chance of success oh and survival of that tooth just goes a little bit lower. Mm, mm, so, mm, mm, mm. so call your dentist at three in the morning and they will come in, <laughs> right? Well, which kid is playing baseball at three in the morning? They rock <laughs> house. Especially if there's a bunk bed involved, Ooh, a sleepover. Are, oh, You're getting dangerous. called at three in the morning. I know, right? A little no. elbow, yeah. <laughs> Okay, that is it. I hope you enjoyed our segment about dental health with Dr. Maury. I will see you soon. Thank see you. you guys soon. Bye. Bye.